Cam Underwood joining us from State of the U to talk Miami football with uh, spring practice underway. Uh, in Cam's appearances over, I would say, the last six weeks in particular, there is no question that he has brought more comments to my channel by far than anyone else, and for good reason. So it's a number of things. He brings a number, uh, he brings enthusiasm, brings insight. Also, Miami's obviously a, a brand that brings a lot of attention, so a lot of things working well there. I would say Cam, since, I don't know, in the last four to six weeks, uh, there's easily two to 300 comments. So we tried to, before we started to record, uh, hone in on a few themes that have come through and really sparked some debate. So one of those was the comment about DBU, Florida, Miami, and some other schools mixed in there. We may address that at another time. So what we hit on was recruiting and the success that Mark Richt has had in the recruiting ranks versus his predecessor, Al Golden. And how much can that be credited to Richt and his staff versus just the the environment and the sanctions and what Al Golden had to deal with. So Cam, I will leave it up to you to kind of interpret uh, what the success is now and how much can be credited to Rick versus what Golden had to deal with. Yeah, I think that there's kind of a six on one hand, half dozen on the other field. Obviously nothing exists in a vacuum. Um, so I think there are multiple factors for what's going on. First of all, um, I wrote a couple of years ago when Al Golden was still Miami's coach that to be successful in recruiting, Miami needed to uh, embrace a new recruiting paradigm, I believe is what I called it. Um, and I laid out a bunch of things, obviously winning, reconnecting with uh, top high school programs, with youth programs, because you can go to the youth parks um, and meet with them and be out there, which is what Mark Rick did this year. Um, so, you know, not even waiting. Because there's restrictions at high school level, obviously. But, you know, start with those kids at Optimus Parks. You know, if you watch uh, the rivals um, on Viceland where they went into Liberty City, they talked about a couple of those, uh, you know, Optimus programs, which are legendary. You know, why are we not, why is Miami not going to those practices? Um, at least, you know, whatever is, is allowed, you know, things like that. So I think that this staff has uh, embraced a new paradigm, a different paradigm from previous. Um, and their continuity and longevity and success rate, both at Miami and elsewhere, gives them credentials that the previous staff did not have. Um, so if you saw in the 2016 recruiting cycle, that would be the Shaq Quarterman, Joe Jackson uh, class, you know, Miami got a lot of, uh, got a Miami caliber class, but the numbers were just low. The ratio of four star, five star guys to, to three-star guys was in the ratio area that you want it to be. But Miami did not, or this current staff did not have the ability to build a relationship with more guys because they were new. Same thing with the 2017 class. You have good numbers. You have a lot of four-star kids. You have some really, really good kids. DJ Johnson coming from California, defensive end, 6'5", 240, just ran a 11.6 100-meter dash at a track meet in Sacramento, which is ridiculously fast especially at 6'5 240 and he said you know what i've done sub 11 in training which is ridiculous for a guy that size so you're bringing in that kind of caliber athlete who almost recruited himself he famously has said that you know he had the most offers in america 100 um scholarship offers could have really went anywhere that he wanted and he called miami and said yo what's up are you interested in me or or no let me know and Coach was like, wait, who, who is this? Like, okay, I'll, I'll look into it or whatever. You know, you figure out who he is, you know, but that kind of a thing is cool, but that was kind of like a, that's the, the anomaly. That's the exception, not the rule. So you see a lot of the top guys in this last recruiting class, a Jerry Judy goes to Alabama, who who's, was never contacted by the previous coaching staff, not once ever at all. And he was a teammate of Calvin Ridley and Sean Burgess Becker, uh, to a four-star and a five-star recruit when he was a freshman and sophomore in high school. So if you're on that same team playing at the varsity level already, it stands to reason, yo, if Miami offered the older kids, you slide offer to the younger kids. That's just kind of how it works. That's why Mark Anthony Richards, uh, Amon Richards' brother, Evidence Njoku, Charles Njoku, you know, younger brothers of David Njoku. This is why siblings and other teammates have offers. Noah Kane 
2019 running back, just transferred to IMG. He went to uh, Denton Geyer High School in Texas. He was teammates of Brian Palendi, an early enrollee this year. So what happened? We recruit Palendi. We see this awesome running back. You slide them an offer. But Miami, those are the kind of things that Miami did not do. Um, so there was the exception in, you know, uh, DJ Johnson, getting back to my original point of really – selling himself to Miami as opposed to uh, building this relationship over a couple of years. Now, if you spin that forward in the 2018 cycle where Miami has the current number one ranked class, this staff has been here since 2016. So now for top guys, you have a multi-year relationship that pays off. You know, it's not that, oh, okay, it's not, it's not the NCAA video game where you get the guys as a senior and they pop up in your game and you've never heard of them before because the system auto generated it. And then you work in one year or a couple of weeks to get all these top talents. That's great in video games, but not in real life. So you really do need to build this relationship with these guys as in addition to winning games, you know, and we've talked, I've talked on here before about the, the difference between being good and being relevant. Miami is and will always be relevant. You know, if you're talking about all these comments that have been generated, also comment generation champion, you know, but uh, you, you talk about all these things on here. Like, look, my people are not talking about Miami because they are irrelevant. Teams that are irrelevant and no disrespect because they obviously have the program and they can do what they do in the best way they can. If I were a Middle Tennessee State alum, if I were a Vanderbilt alum, if I were an Idaho alum, the traction for this would not be the same because they are not relevant in the same kind of a way as is Miami. So Miami was not good previously, but always relevant. So now if you get some on-field performance, you see some times where, okay, we're winning these games, we're playing really well. You know, even in games where, you know, you lose and I hate moral victories and I'm not even going to say the name of the team that we had that one point loss to last year, but, you know, in a showing on a national TV game, it's not, okay, 55 to three and we're gonna change the channel. That game went all the way down to basically the last play of the game, you know? And so you see these things and you get that. So now what you're selling the coaches, what they're selling to the younger kids, come in and play. Well, you know, uh, we're gonna go somewhere else where they use this position. I'm on Richards, first team freshman All-American. Joe Jackson, Shaq Quarterman. Boom, boom, boom. Mark Walton had 600 yards as a freshman, stepped up to 1,100 yards as a sophomore. Boom. You're looking across the field. Brad Kaya, you know, he started as a freshman. You're looking on the offensive line through the first week. Navon Donaldson, freshman. John Garvin running with the twos at defensive end, but our defensive ends are Chad Thomas and Joe Jackson, so a freshman's probably not going to start there, but he can play. Obviously, in the defensive secondary, we lose a lot of guys, but you can play. So, you know, there's a lot of things that are going on, and I know – as I've been giving this answer, I've touched on a couple of different things, but the landscape is just very different for recruiting. And I think that, you know, the NCAA uh, sanctions and everything that Al Golden's regime had to deal with are more than zero. So I'm not going to discount them completely. Uh, you know, you have Amir Rasul who went to Florida State and he said, look, I don't know what's going to happen with Al Golden. So I got to look out for me and I'm going to go to somewhere where I know their coach is not going to get fired. And even if he leaves, it's going to be a more seamless transition than if Al Golden got fired because he was a 2016 recruit. Makes sense. Cool. I mean, do I like it per se? Because he went to Coral Gables High School right down the street from UM? Yeah, I would have preferred him to be at Miami. Also, we could use the depth of running back right now. But it makes sense why he did what he did. You know, um, so, yeah, there, there's a lot going on. You're, you're seeing a lot more kids talk about Miami in, uh, at events. You know, you have the Rivals Camp, and there's been a couple Rivals articles. I heard it when I went to the Miami Regional for uh, Nike's The Opening. Other people are seeing it in, you know, other places where Miami is being brought up un, unannounced, I will say. So, you know, if a journalist is asking a kid, hey, who are one of your top teams? Hey, man, you know Miami's doing – Something like, whoa, like the journal, you know, a, a non Miami journalist, you know, national guys uh, who, you know, work for an entity and have no affiliation. Miami is coming up a lot more now. And I think that's a concerted effort by the staff to connect with those kids. Um, and you can have kids visit a lot more than previous. They can still only get one ticket for an unofficial visit, I believe. But, you know, kids are willing to pay their way to be at more games. Uh, you know, they're willing to come on down, find a way, you know, hey, 
um, Deontay from Norland High School? Did you use your ticket already? Did one of your teammates use their ticket? Can I get your ticket and come on down from Tallahassee or from Orlando and use your ticket to get in for, for another unofficial visit? You know, there, there's just a lot going on. And I think that, you know, it's, it's both – the NCAA sanctions kind of alleviating, you know, being done now 100%. Uh, so you can have former players back on campus and back at on the sidelines. And also, this staff knew what they were up against. They knew that the brand of Miami in the minds of local players was not what it once was. So they're out there actively rebuilding the image of Miami, the value of a Miami scholarship offer to these kids especially locally. And I mean, because every team, their base for their team, for their roster is local. And Miami, we are blessed to be in the most fertile recruiting ground in America. So to rebuild the cachet of the University of Miami is one or has been one of the top things on this staff's to-do list. And I think they're doing a great job. So the bottom line answer is pretty much what I expected to be, but something that I'm going to put in my hip pocket because I try to cover all of college football is that the environment is more favorable, the landscape is more favorable for Mark Richt and his staff. But there's also a component working that Mark Richt has more cachet, more credibility than Al Golden does, and he's also put together a staff that is more capable in reality, not just in terms of reputation, but in getting out there and building those relationships, and they understand the recruiting ins and outs to yield the kind of crop that we're seeing here in the last couple of recruiting classes and specifically 2017 and what looks to be on the horizon for 2018.